waters off Yokohama in Japan, thousands of passengers are quarantined on the Diamond Princess cruise ship. People that we've been dining with during the duration of the cruise uh, for our evening meals, because uh, we're a table of six and all Brits, um, one of them has been proved positive to the virus and he will most certainly be leaving the ship today. Love. Exciting. I have no idea how he must be feeling. They're on the honeymoon and uh, he will be going off into quarantine in a medical facility and she has to stay on board the ship. Come aboard. Um, we've just had another announcement that's come through. Um, the captain has apologised that he hasn't been able to inform us or give us any announcements any sooner than or any more frequently than he has. We're expecting you. Another day confined to their cabins, counting the ambulances, counting the number of coronavirus patients as it doubles, then more than quadruples. We are looking at our balcony and um, there are indeed more ambulances lining up like they were yesterday. Americans Kent and Rebecca Frazier never thought they would be on one of those ambulances until a Japanese nurse knocked on the door. We need you to get ready. We don't know how long you have to stay in the hostel. Pack up, pack the luggage, go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. and then stay in the room. Rebecca's throat swab came back positive for coronavirus. Sweetest reward. Let it flow. It was meant to be the honeymoon they would never forget. It's turned into a nightmare. Ready to get off this boat. We've, We've been ready. Days. And we just don't feel like we're safe. The newlyweds are stuck on board. It floats back to you. Ken, uh, bear with us. I apologize, but we do have the ship that's pulling in right now. Uh, this is the Anthem of the Seas, uh, which is just docking here in Bayonne uh, from a several-day excursion in the Bahamas. And we do know that there are about a dozen Chinese nationals actually on board this uh, massive ship right now who have been quarantined with fears they may have the coronavirus. Uh, as you can see, a giant ship uh, can hold more than 4,000 people and, again, about 12 people right now who are are uh, quarantined. Love. These people apparently started showing symptoms, flu-like symptoms. Soon we'll be making them all uh, you're looking at live pictures of the Anthem of the Seas. It's a Royal Caribbean cruise ship that is now about to dock here in Bayonne, New Jersey. Again, we have reports of about a dozen Chinese nationals on board this ship who are uh, 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 sh showing flu-like symptoms. In the love boat promises something. If we are permitted out on open deck, as we may be in the next couple of days, uh, we have to wear the mask when we're outside. We've also been given, in addition to the face masks, we've now been given gloves. So if we do go outside, we have to wear the gloves. And I think that's a sensible precaution, especially if you're going to be touching handrails on the ship or anything like that. We've got a temperature probe. It's been announced by the captain that we are to monitor our temperatures. So it should be 37.1. Oh dear. For them, this luxury liner is starting to feel like a floating prison. We're in a contaminated prison, possibly. Won't hurt anymore. Many of the 2,600 plus passengers are in cramped cabins, no windows, breathing air circulated throughout the ship. Open smile on a friendly shore. This is not a safe environment, and we don't think anybody, let alone the Japanese government, wants to be responsible for making a bad decision about 
quarantining us in an unsafe place. If they're really concerned and worried, we should be quarantined in, an un in a sanitary environment that's safe, not on a cruise ship that's already infected. The newlyweds say they're feeling depressed and scared. Their message is crystal clear. Donald Trump. Save us. Hello everyone, welcome to Neon Realist. Ah, the nostalgia. I haven't thought about cruise ships so much since the uh, last time they were showing Love Boat reruns on uh, some channel I was flipping past uh, years ago. Uh, do they still show that show? And I'm guessing, uh, given my audience, this, this would have been way before most of your time. Uh, back in uh, 1977. ABC Network debuted a television series called The Love Boat. Now, as corny as the title sounds, this, uh, I guess you would call it a comedy slash drama. I mean, it ran for, what, what did I say, nine seasons on television. The final episode went off the air in uh, 1987, and there were like about four three hour long special uh, TV movies. I think the last one was in 1990. So basically, your, your bridge between uh, late 70s and uh, 1980s television. It ran on Saturday nights. It was like a two-hour block. I think it was uh, with uh, packaged together with Fantasy Island, another similar show. So the premise revolved around the adventures of the crew of the luxury cruise ship, the SS Pacific Princess, and a rotating weekly cast of uh, special guest stars who would portray the passengers on that uh, particular episode uh, for that week. So... Yeah, Hollywood stars, they'd be involved in these uh, little romantic uh, subplots, uh, romantic comedy type stuff with each other. Anyway, over the years, as you can imagine, this thing's been rerun so many times, anyone with a cable subscription, you're bound to have passed by it at some point uh, or other in your uh, you know, channel surfing. So when I saw that the name of this ship in Yokohama, Japan, quarantined with over, what was it, uh, 3,700 people aboard, that the name was the Diamond Princess. It immediately reminded me of the Pacific Princess in that in that show, The Love Boat, and there, there you have the odd genesis of that uh, opening video montage. Now, to be serious for, uh, you know, with this format, this is no laughing matter anymore. There are now, I believe, three cruise ships around the world, uh, either under some form of quarantine or watch, you know, for people aboard with uh, coronavirus. You have the Diamond Princess uh, that we stocked in Yokohama, Japan, has, as of last night, as of this recording, confirmed uh, you know, cases of 2019 novel coronavirus. So far, uh, 61 of the passengers have tested positive out of the ones they've tested for it. They haven't even tested everyone. I guess there's so many people they got to test. So just four days ago, it was just one Chinese guy who they took off the ship. And uh, the day after that, remember, the guy was on the ship for like five days before they took him off. 20 more people had tested positive for coronavirus on uh, day two or three. And last night, we got the news that 41 more people tested positive on the uh, on that uh, Diamond Princess. So it makes it does 61 cases as of this morning. Now, who knows? By tonight, when they report the figures, for all we know, there's going to be more infected. So, I mean, look at how infectious this thing. The, the, that ship is basically a Petri dish for studying the spread of a 2019 novel coronavirus. One guy, just one Chinese guy, gets on the boat. Off, you know, gets on uh, from, from China. And four or five days later, they got to get him off... After they get them off the boat, you have 28 Japanese uh, citizens, 11 Americans, 7 Canadians, 7 Australians, 3 people from Hong Kong, 1 Taiwan native, 1 Argentine, a New Zealander, a Filipino, and a British citizen, all infected and suffering from 2019 novel coronavirus. All from one guy getting on the ship from China. I mean, people, what are we doing? Is Canada still operating flights to China? Or is Prime Minister Justin Trudeau still spewing the let them cough on you uh, bigot spiel? How is it that the world leaders in Asia, they all have their hair on fire, they're closing down borders, they're hammering people's doors shut with boards, they're at full mobilization. 
But in North America and Europe, people are more worried about Sinophobia. I mean, this is clown world. This isn't just some theoretical exercise either, because just this morning, not even an hour's drive away from here, uh, uh, you know, from Brooklyn, maybe 45 minutes if you get lucky with the traffic, what, you jump on Atlantic Avenue, you go down Flatbush, all the way to the Manhattan Bridge, you head through Chinatown, ironically enough, down Canal Street into downtown Manhattan, you take the Holland Tunnel to Jersey, then you take the Turnpike South down to exit uh, 14A Bayonne, and boom, there you are. You can head down to the dock and wave up at the thousands of passengers aboard the uh, Royal Caribbean Line cruise ship, uh, Anthem of the Seas, because a group of 12 people from China had, pe you know, uh, they had people getting sick on board, so they had to put into port. They don't know if this is coronavirus or some other ailment, uh, but, you know, as you can imagine, out of an abundance of caution, they're treating it as if it were until they know for certain what they're dealing with. So the Pentagon... It was just a couple of days ago, they, they announced they were preparing a thousand beds for quarantine nationwide. You know, the last I saw a couple of days ago, and I imagine most of those beds, naturally, they'd be set up on the West Coast in California. Given that uh, those are the nearest domestic ports to China, they, have, they already had something like 200 uh, people already under quarantine at that military base. Uh, now, hopefully, all these people have on the uh, ship in Bayonne, New Jersey is your uh, run-of-the-mill seasonal flu and or something of that nature. And odds are that's what it'll turn out to be. But why are we even taking chances with this in countries outside of Asia? Our modern world, you know, we, we, we see it's, it's like we take for granted. We're accustomed to living in 2020 and we make certain basic assumptions that we may have to reassess given recent events. Number one, the assumption that first world industrialized countries will always be able to contain, you know, mortal pandemic diseases. That these are risks only for sub-Saharan African countries or South Asia, you know, the more remote, uh, remote corners of the developing world. I mean, so intertwined with that assumption is the assumption that international travel should always uh, be relatively free and unfettered and, and convenient. Now, prior to the 20th century, this just wasn't the case. Even as late as the 1800s, if X number of people got on board a ship for a transoceanic uh, voyage, you know, barring accident I'm talking about here, let's say they actually make it to their destination, there was not an insignificant risk that one or more people aboard the vessel would get severely ill or even not survive the trip. When the Mayflower crossed the, uh, the Atlantic in 1620, when they, when they left uh, the Old World, there were like 130 people aboard. 102 of them were passengers and the rest were crew. By the time they disembarked after wintering aboard the ship in uh, March, was it 1621? Only 53 of the passengers stepped off that ship alive. It was about half of them died. And half of the crew were dead as well. So, I mean, they died of scurvy, pneumonia, tuberculosis. This was just the way things were prior to modern times. Travel entailed a significant risk of contracting a, a potentially deadly disease. Well, it's 2020. And we know of at least one ship where one guy was patient zero for an infection that's now in it, uh, you know, as of this moment, 61 people. So given how 2019 novel coronavirus, how it's devastating Hubei province in China, uh, and, you know, increasingly looks like it's about to, to uh, hit uh, a few other provinces very hard, maybe, just maybe, we should be taking this a little more seriously re-examine a few of the assumptions that we make, you know, when we have a virus that we can't be sure, but, you know, some reports are saying can live as long as five days on a surface outside of a, a host body, or even, even this 2010 study just on coronaviruses in general, claiming that under the right conditions, they could survive as many as 28 days on a surface under the right temperature and humidity. But, you know, don't take my word for it. This was the interior of the last American flight to leave Wuhan, evacuating the last U.S. and Canadian citizens who will be leaving Wuhan during this outbreak. Show of hands, has anybody not finished it yet? The only reason I say this is it's gonna get really weird when everybody gets off the plane and you cannot. Because you have to have that in order to Airplane. Note how
while the military aircrew is wearing the proverbial spacesuits with what was pointed out to be my uh, Joseph McComber on Twitter is not an integral air supply, but in fact a powered air purifying respirator, which he described as performing the same function as a filtering mask, but adding positive airflow. Now, I don't recall any seasonal flu outbreak where men in full protective suits and respirators demand that you fill out a, a form agreeing to remain in quarantine as uh, ordered by the United States federal government if you aren't even feeling sick. So unless I'm mistaken, maybe the level of preparedness by people on our side of the Pacific should perhaps increase just a little bit. That's all for this new on Realist. If you want to help the channel, do me a favor. Hit like for this video, leave a comment below, mash down the subscribe button if you're not already subbed to the channel, and click on the notification bell beside it. Put it on the all setting to keep up with newer content. If you want to contribute directly to the channel and toss your hard-earned dollars and yuan into the tip jar, follow the links below to Patreon, Subscribestar, or PayPal, or if you watch this on BitChute, you can just click on the green tip pledge button on the video player. More importantly, Thanks for watching. It's love.